So today we are doing our May June twenty three. Okay, so uh, without further ado, let's get started with our question here. Okay, the first question they were asking us about writing down a numbers that is twenty three less than one point six. So we have one point six here minus another twenty three. You will get your answer as. Negative twenty four point six. Okay, so far so good. Quite straightforward. Seventy two percent in its simplest form. Okay, make sure it's in fraction. That will make it eighteen over twenty five. Zero point zero zero four. So most of the question here, just key in your calculator, you will get your results. Moving on to question three. The diagram shows a pair of parallel lines in a straight line. Complete the statement with the correct geometrical reason. X is 40 degree because of the angles are corresponding. Okay, so we have corresponding, we have alternate, we have vertically opposite. So this one here is corresponding. Identifying the value of y, this one is quite straightforward as well because 2y plus 100 will become a full turn of 360. 2y will be 360 minus 100. Then y's value will be 130. Okay. So Joe invested 600 for 7 years at a one point. 5% per annum. So just take 600 times 7 times 1.5%. You should get your answer as $63 throughout the 7 years of investment. Question 6. Maria buys N pencil and that costs P cent each and pay with a Y dollars note. Okay. Mm, so find the change. So you paid with Y dollar note. Okay, because they say it was a dollar, so you must change the Y here into 100. Okay, because one dollar will represent 100 cent. Minus N P. So there's no need to change the P here because it's already in cent. And we don't know how many pencil that was purchased. So that's just N there. So that, there's nothing more for you to calculate from this. Question seven, a cube numbers referring to 125 because five times five times five will result in 125. So prime numbers are numbers that can be divided by one and itself only. So out of numbers here, I think only 29. Is a prime number. Okay, so let's double check 91. Can it be divided by 3? No. But there might be something else that, yeah. So 91 can be divided by 13. So try to use your multiplication table and check. Uh, because smaller numbers, right, when you memorize it from small to big, the multiplication table, you will notice that 29 didn't appear in any of the combination. Okay, so that obviously will make it the final answer here. Question 8. Alex changed 190 euros into pound. Okay, when 1 euro is 1.1723 pound. 190 divided with 1.1723. Then you should be able to get your answers. And next question we have using a calculator. So you got three and then five. For this, you have two for 15. So divide becomes multiplication two. You have three, three, that will make it two over nine as your final answer. 
For the next one is triangle T onto triangle A. As you can see, there's no changes to the shape whatsoever. So it's just a uh, translation. It's a translation. With a vector of. So let's check. It was being shifted down by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It went down by 8 steps. So that's a change in Y and then shift to the left hand side by 1. So negative 1, negative 8. That will be your final answer. Okay, I almost missed out on the question here. They were asking us to draw the image of triangle T after an enlargement of negative 1 over 2 from the center. So the moment when you saw the term negative, okay, means that the shape will now be inverted and then so I must join this line here first okay so our results will be somewhere around here and then for the part that has six boxes will now reduce us to three only Draw it again, it's right over here. This would be the answers that they were asking for. From a gap of six, it now reduces to three only. Gap of two becomes one. And then you join these two up to make it your final shape. So what I'm referring was this two after being multiplied with uh, 1 over 2, you get 1 left. And this 6 here, after being multiplied with uh, 1 over 2, you get 3. That's how I identify the inverted image of the triangle T after the enlargement. Next question that we have here is actually algebra question. So you get 4 times 3 is 12 x you have 3 plus 4 that will make it 7 so 12 x 7 will be your final answer integers value that is in between this so kindly take note if they were, get, were to give you this question in your exam kindly split your calculation up so you have 4 x will be 2 for this you will have negative 2x, negative 1 plus 3, negative 2x, positive 2. So when I try to get rid of the negative, the direction will change. And then whatever that was positive there will be negative. x will be more than equals to negative 1 through my calculation. So if they were asking for integers value, that will be including 0 and 1. So 2 is excluded from this. The reason why negative 1 is included because they use more than equals 2 as the signage here. Expand and simplify, you will get 6t minus 6q minus 2t plus 6q. So through your calculation, you will get 4t as your final results. So question 14 here, when you saw the keyword magnitude, you must know that they were assessing you on Pythagoras theorem. So you're taking 20 square plus k square equals to 29 square. So k's results would actually be 29 square minus 20 square. So square root of 441 will result in 21 as your final answer. And because it is a vector, and also there's a square root there. The results can be both positive and negative. If you didn't write the positive negative, I think that they might deduct one marks from your results here. Question 15, A, B, X is similar. Okay, or the terms that they like to use will be concurrent. Okay, but similar is the more co common ones. Work out the value of B, X here. So to get to Bx, kindly take note that 
one of the side is longer and one of the side is shorter so i will always draw it out again before i proceed with my calculation so i'll be comparing 8 over 12 against our bx over 6. so 8 times 6 divided by 12 you will get your answers of bx as 4 centimeters so this is the longer one this is the shorter one so long compared against long short compared against short okay the triangle dcx is 26.906 centimeters square use this value to find the area of triangle abx so since they gave you the area if you were to use it for your calculation okay kindly take note that you must square root the value Okay, ABX is a smaller one. The side that they share is 6. So 6 times square root of 26.906 divided with 12 and then square the entire thing. That will make it 6.7265. Okay, so for us to solve the last question here, we already gotten half AX times BX, half AB sine C. Uh, then we should be able to get the results. AX B equals to our 6.7265 so from this we can now find ax first okay since it was half of it of everything so here is 4 cm here will be 3.5 so 1 over 2 times 3.5 times 4 times sine axp equals to 6.7265 sine inverse 6.7265 divided with 4 divided with 3.5 divided with 0 0.5 which is up 1 over 2 here so angle axp should be 73 73.93 so the one final steps to get to the results is by taking half times AX times XC times our sign results of our AXC. AXC will be our 180 minus 73.93. Then you will get your answers. 0 0.5 times 3.5 times 8 times sine 180 minus 73.93 you should be able to get your results as 13.45 or 13.5 as your final answer for the next question of ACX the only thing that I couldn't really figure out was that why is the working so complicated that's the part that I couldn't figure out why is the working so complicated for one mark question okay if you know the reasons feel free to share in the comment section so that everyone gets to know moving on we have question 16 here which is the side of a regular hexagon is 80 mm corrected to the nearest meters millimeters okay so rounding value will be taking one divided by two you will get the results as plus minus 0 0.5 so hexagon there's about six sides of it okay so our answers will actually be 80 minus 0 0.5 and then multiply with 6 
so that will make it 477 the interior angle of regular polygon is 175 and minus 2 times 180 divided by n so this is the formula and you have 775 here so 180 n minus 360 equals to 175 n 5 n equals to 360 360 divided by 5 you get the results as 72 sides okay so question 17 just apply the formula then you get your results nothing much to do here as for question 18 the car starts from rest and accelerate at the rate of 3 meters per second square for 4 seconds then travel at a constant speed for 10 seconds find the value of v so they gave us accelerate for 4 seconds so here it was starting from 0 0 here it was 4 and v so if you were to run the gradient calculation it should result in 3 so v equals to 12 as your final answer okay so now that you have this as 12 you know that here is 12 here is 14 for this particular part it will be 14 minus 4 so to calculate the answer 10 plus 14 divided by 2 times 12 then you would get your answer here 10 plus 14 divided by 2 times 12 you get your final answer as 144 so moving on to question 19 section a they gave us the results was 50 there okay so the only things that i know was that the direct opposite of this will also be 50 so i've forgotten the exact terms for this rule here but uh, i will put it in the screen okay and check on it so here will be 50 as well that makes your tbq as 80 so the keyword or the things that they expect you to fall into was that when you saw the word tangent then you thought you can use 90 degree at ATQ okay that's actually not 90 degree the reason behind was that it didn't touches the radius notice the question didn't give you radius at all that's the trap that they set up there okay so next First thing that you should know, we are using cyclic quadrilateral here where 3x plus 2x will be 180. So 180 divided by 5, you will get your answer as... thirty-six. That is for your x value. As for here, same thing again, 180 minus 68 because it was straight line. So W's value will be 180 minus 112. That will make it 68. So that's how you get the 36 and 68 here. Moving on to the next question. Okay, so you notice that there was a minus 1 there that they want you to sort it out. So I wouldn't change the one with 10 to the power of P, but the minus one I can actually get rid of it by giving the results to it so by adjusting the 2.1 into 0 0.21 the power will now be increased by one so that would cancel off the effects there so we have 10 P for both of them and you were to add them up you will get 2.31 as your final answer Basically, what I did here was to borrow a power of 1 from 2.1. Identifying the shortest distance from B to AC. It was 12.8. So calculate the value of BC. 
Kindly take note when they are using the word shortest distance, when you draw the line, it will form a right angle for sure. So by having this 12.8 as the opposite of 65, this will be the hypotenuse. Sine 65 equals to 12.8 and BC. BC's result will be 12.8 divided by sine 65. You will get your results as 14.1. Okay. As for question 22 here, Z is inversely proportional to the square of Y minus 2 squared. So your task was to figure out what's your scale factor here, which is our K, by putting in 9 and 5 you will get your case results as 9 times 3 squared, which is 81. So Z value will actually be 81, Y minus 2 squared. Okay, question 23 here. Um, some of you might use ratio to do it, but I don't think it's correct. I personally would use our cosine rule. Okay, the largest angle is referring to this. So, 10 square plus 9 square minus 2 times 10 times 9 times cosine unknown equals to 11 square. So, to get to the results, that will be 10 square plus 9 square minus 11 square divided by 2 times 9 times 10 equals to cosine unknown. Uh, unknown's value will be cosine inverse. Cosine inverse 10 square plus 9 square minus 11 square 2 times 10 times 9. You will get the results as 70.5 degrees. Okay, that's how you get your final answer here. As for next question, we have 2 over x. So as per usual, I will draw this out. If you were to put this, it would be invalid, which means that uh, I will never touch 0. If I were to put um, 1, my answer will be 2. If I put anything smaller than that, it will be very big. So maybe I put 0 0.02. 2 divided by 0 0.02, it will be 100. Wow. So repeat the same in negative form. Negative 1, you will get negative 2. Negative 0 0.02, you will get negative 100. So this is just to tell us that it will never touch us to 0, but it will continue to extend. Okay, never touches zero, continue to extend. Never touches zero, continue to extend. Okay, something like this. As for the other one, if you have y and x here, if let's say x is zero today, okay, two to the power of zero will be one. If I were to put a hundred, 2 to the power of negative 100 the value will be super small and if you were to put positive 100 then it will be super big interesting big. negative will be big positive will be small so I assume the results will look something like this. Positive hundred will be small. So this will how it looks like. They will touch at one and then continue to extend. That's how I'm going to solve this question. 
you need a lot of practice so that you get comfortable with what's happening here. Okay, uh, basically you just treat like a function question, but you are the one that is inputting the figures. Find the x coordinates when the gradient is zero. When you have this, please kindly take note they were referring to a dy dx. So you actually bring out the power, reduce the original power by one. Bring out the power, you will have four times five. That will be 20 and then the power reduces by one again. And from here, they wanted the gradient to be zero. So we have 5x4 minus 20x3 equals to zero. Extracted 5x3. Extract 5x3, you have x minus four as the results. So x value can either be zero or x value will be four. So for those who wonder how did I differentiate this, attach is the detail. Kindly take note that anything that at the front, when they didn't include any numbers, means it's 1. So we have 1 times 5, x to the power of 5 minus 1. 4 times 5, x to the power of 4 minus 1. That's how I get my results of 5x4 and 20x cubed. Okay. Lastly, we have question 26 here. Malik goes to a shop every day to buy bread. On any day, the probability that Malik goes to the shop in the morning is 0 0.7. Morning late is 0 0.3. Shop will have bread for Malik to buy during morning is 0 0.5. 0.05 is that it's sold out. If they go out late, 0 0.6 for him to buy. Must be a pretty famous shop. So that's it. And they wanted the probability that Alex managed to buy. So you can be late but still manage to buy. So you must add the probability up. 0 0.7 times 0 0.95 adding up with 0 0.3 times 0 0.6 you will get your answers at 0 0.845 that will be your final answer for this question so overall this paper here is quite easy the only question that students might struggle to do will be 25 24 these two other newly added topics traps that students might fall into will be question 23 and so question 20 and lastly the one with the tangent okay question 19a here the rest is pretty much straightforward okay so i hope you find this video helpful and if you have friends that are struggling, feel free to share this to them. And I wish you all the best in your upcoming examination. So, thank you. Bye-bye.